Back in November, I had planned on covering the story behind metformin, a popular anti-aging drug that's also super cheap. Unfortunately, my many scientific investigations carried me to different lands, but I wanted to come back to it because while I touched on it in my anti-aging series, uh, I didn't really dive into some of the details. Then I ran across Cleo Abrams' video on it, and well, I thought that it might be a good idea to mix things up a bit. Cleo is a journalist and a science communicator, and she tackles metformin with great intrigue. So let's listen to her, and then I'll chime in with a bit more detail on two popular studies that made metformin so popular, and then not so popular. I stumbled into the weirdest thing recently, and it all starts with this little pill. Researchers discover some very exciting new benefits from a drug that's already on the market. Metformin. 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 The first anti-aging drug. Possible anti-aging drug. Can you spell it? M-E-T. Could be revolutionary. Is it really the fountain of youth? Are we on to something here? This isn't some sketchy supplement. It's a real drug. It's been used effectively by people with diabetes for decades to control their blood sugar. And it's cheap. It's really cheap. It's pennies per pill. Yep, all true. Metformin was originally used to combat diabetes, but since this first study released, it then blew up to be used by all manner of people, including many people without diabetes. But let's hear Cleo interview a researcher on this particular study. And this is a study from the UK where they took 180,000 people approximately. They looked at three groups of people. People with diabetes taking metformin, people with diabetes who were taking other diabetes drugs, not metformin, and people without diabetes who weren't taking any diabetes drugs. The people with diabetes who weren't taking metformin had double the mortality, the number of deaths, than the people without diabetes. But this is really what was school. People on metformin that were diabetics were more obese. They were more sick to begin with had less mortality than people without diabetes. The fact that people with diabetes who were taking metformin died less than people without diabetes is huge. But if you're applying that to anti-aging, there's some really big caveats. First, these are correlations. This is a retrospective study. They're looking back at what happened. They weren't able to test whether metformin caused it to happen. And second, the only people in this study taking metformin were people with diabetes. It's not clear whether that whole dying less thing applies to people without diabetes. A few key points here. People with diabetes taking metformin outlive people without diabetes not taking metformin. Let me show you what that looks like here. The vertical axis is the survival and the horizontal axis is the years gone by. If the line is higher up, then that means better survival. The black line is the people who were not diabetic and not taking metformin. The green line is the diabetics on metformin. Notice that teeny tiny space between the two indicating that metformin group did a little better than the non-metformin group. Think about that. That's pretty incredible. Diabetics outperforming non-diabetics simply by taking a drug. At least that's the assumed reason because like Cleo pointed out, it's an association. Here's the thing though. There's a major problem with this study that was pointed out in a follow-up study. This follow-up study reinvestigated the topic and showed drastically different results. It's the same type of data, but this time the top line, the dark gray, is the control group, so the non-metformin users. This indicates that metformin does not lead to superior results versus healthy controls, that is it likely still does against uncontrolled type 2 diabetes. So why were the results so different between these two studies? Well, as Dr. Peter Atia pointed out in an article that he wrote, I'll link it to this video for you, the first study defined the diabetes metformin group as a monotherapy group, meaning that these people we're only taking metformin, but considering diabetes is, well, a progressive disease and people inevitably had to get on other treatments as well, they were then 
excluded from the analysis. That means that people who were getting more sick were removed from the analysis. So if you're looking at mortality, that's a huge confounding variable. You're essentially stacking the deck in one's favor. That isn't necessarily the researcher's fault, but it is a major flaw which artificially boosts the diabetes results. And yes, the study was funded by BMS, the producers of metformin. However, the study released two years after metformin was already generically available and cheap. Additionally, none of this tells us anything about metformin for people who are healthy and taking it to extend lifespan. However, fortunately, there is some strong hope on the horizon. Here's why. We need more research. And that's what Dr. Barzilai is trying to do. Dr. Barzilai is about to launch a new nationwide study. A proper randomized trial where they give half of people metformin and half of people a placebo drug. So you're going to be hearing a lot more about this in the future. This is really the challenge that I'm leading now. This is the STAME study. STAME stands for targeting aging with metformin. And the reason I'm doing that is not to repeat the studies that I told you. It's to really plan a study for the FDA to repurpose a drug that we believe targets aging. It's hard to overstate how incredible this would be if it works. Like they are trying to figure out if aging is treatable, if something can push back the accumulation of damage and push back the diseases that kill the most of us. And if that something isn't some crazy million dollar thing, but a drug that is already on the market and already affordable for many, many people. That's right, a controlled trial looking at metformin with a more specific look at aging. Cleo's video, and she did a great job, released about two years ago. So I looked into the TAME study, and although it's been two years, the trial still hasn't been published. But then again, the study is supposed to last six years across 14 laboratories. So it'll be quite a massive effort. So we have some waiting to do to get some clear answers, unfortunately. Still, metformin is still a benefit for many, even if we don't have the aging answers yet. But if you're interested in aging, consider my other aging videos that I've linked for you right here. And I'll speak with you over there.